I don't know if we're ever gonna solve this puzzle. We've been at it for hours. We must be missing something. Can I investigate the room again more closely? I think we should revisit the idea that it might be a biblical allegory. Remember, there were apples in the other room. Plus, there was a giant constrictor snake guarding the entrance. How many times do we have to remind you that there is no Bible in this world? Right, DM? Hey friends, Ginny D here. Puzzles are controversial in the world of D&D. Some people love them, some people hate them, and regardless of how you feel about the concept of puzzles, I think we can all agree that they are very easy to do badly. A puzzle that's too hard can create a bottleneck and make players feel frustrated, stupid, or stuck. And a puzzle that's too easy makes for a boring session, low stakes, and possibly an embarrassed DM. Plus, a puzzle being difficult does not automatically make it compelling. And of course, some players just don't like puzzles. They might not be good at or enjoy puzzles in real life, Life and may feel annoyed that their super intelligent wizard can't solve a simple puzzle just because the player doesn't get it. On the other hand, if players can solve a puzzle simply by rolling a high enough intelligence check, that's not a particularly interesting encounter. This leads some DMs to just not use puzzles at all, and I get it. Not every group likes them, but there are also some good reasons to include puzzles in your games. Even though D&D is pretty focused on combat from a mechanical perspective, many DMs want to challenge players in other ways too. It makes games more interesting and gives their sessions more variety. This is why we may include social or role-play-based challenges, exploration, travel, and investigation. Puzzles are just another way to do this. They are also a great way to raise the stakes and lend importance to a location, item, or event. A locked door implies that there is something worth protecting behind it. A locked trapped door even more so, but a door that's guarded by a complex puzzle? Now that's gotta be something big. And of course there are players who do really enjoy puzzles. I'm one of them. If you have players like that at your table, you might wanna beef up your puzzle skills as a dungeon master. So how do you do that? What a puzzle! I wonder if this video might contain a clue. We are doing two things today. We're talking about how to make and run good puzzles in a general sense, and we're talking about a DM skilled supplement called Puzzles, Predicaments, and Perplexities by a duo called Wizard Sleeve Studios. It's only $4.99, so I can't think of a good reason not to pick it up if you're interested in puzzles, but this video will still be helpful even if you don't get the book. DM Skilled, the sponsor for this video, is a community content program partnered with Wizards of the Coast where creators can legally use official D&D material to create and share their own game content, from adventures and character options to monster collections and magic items. There are thousands of PDFs, all created by DMs like you, to help improve your games and make your job easier. You can use the code PUZZLEDGINNY for a 10% discount on your DM Guild purchase of $4.99 or more. You can find the link, the code, and the details in the description. Puzzles, predicaments, and perplexities. Man, I am going to be saying that a lot in this video, aren't I? <laughs> Triple P. P, P, and P. <laughs> Sorry, I'm five years old. Anyway, the book is a collection of 10 original puzzles that DMs can easily place into any adventure, along with instructions for scaling them to suit your party level and hints for how to guide players if they're struggling. There's also general guidance on how to use puzzles in your games and a super useful table of traps ranked by character level and by how deadly they are. We will dig into the book more a bit later, but to start, I wanna talk more broadly about how to pull off a good puzzle in D&D. A good puzzle can be so satisfying to complete, but a bad one can drag down an entire session. Whether you're writing your own puzzles, adapting them from other sources, or using D&D specific resources like this one, I have four tips for making sure that your puzzle is one of the good ones. Remember that scene in Galaxy Quest when they end up in the hallway with the big metal chompers and Sigourney Weaver says, it makes no logical sense. Why is this here? You are right, Sigourney Weaver. We want to avoid that. Just like with a combat encounter, a puzzle will be most compelling when and it makes sense and is meaningfully tied to the larger arc of the game. When I say makes sense, I mean you should ask yourself, who put this puzzle here and why? For example, if nobody is supposed to get in, then why provide a puzzle that can be solved? If you can understand what the puzzle maker was trying to achieve, it can inform the flavor of the challenge, the risk level, the consequences, and more. There is a great example of this in the show Avatar The Last Airbender. In the ruins of the Southern Air Temple, there's a door with a lock that can only be opened with airbending. 
building. This serves a functional purpose. Only airbenders were supposed to gain entry to that space. Now, there might be other creative ways to open this door. I'm sure your D&D party would have some ideas, but the mechanics of the lock, any defenses this door might have, and what lies beyond it are all shaped around that same purpose. Now, when I say it should be meaningful to the game, that could mean a lot of things. Maybe it means they need to get past the puzzle to whatever is beyond it, be that an item, a place, a message, or something else. Maybe it just means that solving or not solving the puzzle has consequences to the larger story. Or perhaps the puzzle, like the airbending lock in Avatar, has specific relevance to a player character's storyline. Whatever it is, it's generally a good idea to make sure there's a reason players should solve this puzzle. Otherwise, you might end up prepping something cool, only to have your players go, do we actually need to solve this, or can we just leave? And you're sure there's nothing else in the room except for the empty stone bowl? Correct. Maybe we need to rotate it? No, we already tried that. Remember? After we filled it with water, but before the barbarian took a shit in it? Oh, yeah. Did we try pee? There is nothing more frustrating than facing down a puzzle and having no idea where to even begin. It sucks to try stuff, gain no understanding from it, and see no path forward. That's why it's a good idea to give your players something right from the start. An obvious goal, like opening a door or revealing a message, some moving parts that are clearly related to the puzzle, like levers or torches, or even a hint to start them off, like notes from a previous adventurer, or even damage or signs of previous solutions. Now, you might be saying some people want a challenge puzzle, and I totally agree with you. A puzzle that is actually difficult to solve is more exciting for players to engage with, and way more satisfying for them to solve. That said, a puzzle that's only hard because it's unclear or poorly constructed does not generate that same effect. To encourage players as they work through the puzzle, I think it's also a good idea for them to know when they've done something right. Not every puzzle has visible indicators of progress, but even a brief description like you hear a grinding sound, like some mechanism somewhere is moving, or you you feel an arcane charge starting to build in the air can help players understand that they are on the right track and not get discouraged or thrown off. What you don't want is for players to feel stuck and out of ideas. If they do get to that point, you should be prepared to provide hints and guide players towards a solution. This could mean calling for an intelligence or perception role and then providing a little nudge. It could mean something happening in-game that reveals further information. The Puzzles, Predicaments, and Perplexities book has a few suggested hints ready along with every puzzle, and I would encourage you to prepare the same thing if you're creating your own challenge. I think it's important to remember that a puzzle doesn't have to be difficult to understand in order to be difficult to complete. You could introduce something as simple as pulling four different levers in four different spots, and as long as finding and actually pulling those levers is a challenge, then the puzzle itself becomes challenging. Introducing a threat or some other sense of urgency can turn even a very simple puzzle into an exciting encounter. This might mean that players have to experiment with something, like doing tasks in a certain order and any incorrect guesses trigger traps or release monsters. It might mean that the puzzle needs to be completed while fending off an attacker, or that only completing the puzzle will rescue an NPC from certain death or close a portal that's funneling enemies into your location. This is also a good way to prevent a puzzle from dragging on. I think we've all experienced the sessions where where players spend so long discussing possible solutions, thoroughly searching and investigating the elements in the room, performing tests, and coming up with creative, defensive ways to move things around with mage hands or unseen servants, that the encounter loses all of its energy and becomes boring. If the party knows that they have only moments to make decisions, they'll be forced to think fast and take risks with their choices. If they're in initiative order and they are hearing from the DM every round that their time is running out, you can bet they'll start making big moves, which makes for an exciting session. Last but not least, there is a very good chance that your players will surprise you with the ideas they have and the things they try. It is very likely that they will come up with a different solution than the one you had in mind. I think it's vital to make sure that you're not married to a single solution, and that you be willing to reward players for coming up with a creative answer, even if it wasn't the answer that you originally intended. Now, I am not saying that you should throw the whole puzzle out and accept the first thing that they try. But if your party understands the challenge and chooses to navigate it in a way that you didn't expect, in my opinion, you have already succeeded as a DM. They are paying attention, they are operating within the rules you've set up, they are thinking outside of the box and being inventive. Don't ignore all those great things in order to force them to take the exact steps that you had envisioned them taking. In real life, there is often more than one way to solve a problem. You can allow that to be true in D&D too. 
Let's talk about one of the 10 puzzles from Puzzles, Predicaments, and Perplexities. Not only will this give you an idea of the kinds of puzzles you can get in this book, I think it's also a great example of all the principles that we just talked about. One of my favorite puzzles from this book is called The Triangle Lock. In this puzzle, adventurers encounter a steel door with 120 keyholes arranged in a triangle shape. This door can be opened with two keys, which the DM can choose to provide in a variety of ways. The book suggests that they could be discovered sessions before they find the door, creating some some mystery. Or they could be found in a chest or in the possession of a hostile creature elsewhere in the vicinity. The door might even be discovered before the keys, making the act of locating and retrieving the keys into part of the puzzle. But if we look back at the first tip about connecting the puzzle to your overall story, make it relevant. Giving the party these keys beforehand helps make this door feel like a continuation of an existing plot thread, rather than a random obstacle that's just been placed in their way. Each of the two keys has an engraving on it, which gives a clue to which keyhole it should be placed in. This is a perfect example of the help players out tip. When they encounter a door with keyholes, they know that they are looking for keys. If they already have keys, this door will automatically bring them to mind. And once you have keyholes and a key, the clear solution is to use the keys to unlock it. This is plenty of direction. Players will inherently understand that some keyholes are right and some keyholes are wrong. Their objective is clear and they know exactly what to do to start gathering data. I also mentioned visible indicators of progress and this this puzzle has that too. Four locks need to be unlocked, and each results in a large clamp on the edge of the door visibly opening. Not only that, but using the keys in the wrong locks will trigger negative effects, making it clear that players have selected the wrong keyhole. If your party still struggles, the book provides six different hints that DMs can use, from perception and investigation checks to the use of thieves' tools and more. My next tip was introduce risk, and this puzzle has a really fun idea for that too. The default negative effect of incorrect keyhole choices is that a second secondary door gradually closes, creating future problems. But there's also a suggestion for raising the stakes in which a wrong guess causes the walls to begin closing in on the party. After four rounds, the walls slam together, dealing bludgeoning damage and knocking players back into the corridor through which they arrived. And of course, if you want to customize this, there is a whole index of traps sorted by character level and deadliness, and you can assign pretty much any negative consequence to turning the key in the wrong hole. Finally, I've suggested that you be open-minded when it comes to solutions, and the authors of this book have specifically noted creative workarounds that your party might use if they don't want to play by the rules of the keys. There are alternative ways that players can identify which keyholes are correct, and each of these locks can be picked with the same effect that a key might have. Similarly, something like the spell knock or a chime of opening could reasonably be used on these individual locks. As a DM, I don't think there's any reason to forbid that kind of solution. If they want to use up four second level spells or nearly half the charge on a consumable magic item to open one door, that seems like a choice they should be able to make. This puzzle is complex enough that even clever workarounds still aren't likely to ruin the entire thing. If you want to figure out your own puzzles, these four tips should go a long way in making sure that they are actually fun and compelling for your party. But if you would rather just borrow a puzzle that already follows all this advice, then you should really pick up Puzzles, Predicaments, and Perplexities by Wizard Sleeve Studios on DMs Guild. It's only $4.99, and there are also two more books in the series if you need more puzzles in your life. My code, PUZZLEGINNY, will get you a 10% discount on your DMs Guild purchase, whether or not it includes this specific puzzle book, so if you've got a wish list going, now is the time to pull the trigger. The code is active through December 26th, so you can use it to get some great digital gifts for your D&D loving friends for the holidays. If you aren't sure what DMs Guild products to use that discount on, you might find my other DMs Guild review videos useful. I will stick that playlist right here. When DMs Guild sponsors me, they let me choose which book to feature, so these videos are highlighting my favorites. Find the discount code and the details of the offer in the description.